Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video, and I think I have a pretty fun one today. We're taking a break from Zendikar Rising for a little bit. So when it comes to decks I personally enjoy, I like the weird, obscure strategies, the ones that most people don't play. And the Inspired Trigger was nothing really special from the original Theros block, but the specific ability of King Makar, the Gold Cursed, from Journey into Nyx, is what I believe to be a pretty powerful trigger if you can get it off in Commander. Gold tokens, I don't know if there's quite the support for them. It's not like treasure tokens where everything else in Magic seems to make treasure tokens. Gold looks like it's just for Theros, which is okay, it doesn't really matter. We're still going to try to go with an artifact theme because of this. It's going to make other things like Improvise stronger if we can get the gold tokens. Because unlike with treasure, you don't have to tap to sacrifice, you can just sacrifice it, period. So let me just read it off for people who are not aware. King Makar the Gold Cursed is... Pretty much King Midas. The gold curse means that everything he touches turns to gold. And you can see he's looking pretty depressed right there. He's a 4 mana, mono black, 2-3 legendary human with the inspired trigger again. Whenever King Makar the Gold Cursed becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named Gold onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this artifact. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So again, Gold is different from Treasure. It is actually better because you don't have to tap to then sacrifice. Which is even better if you're going up against any kind of white cards that force your creatures and your artifacts to come into play tapped. So obviously what we want to do here is fool around with tapping and untapping our King Makar. We want things that can tap him without having to go to combat. And I think the best way to do this is to give him his own garage. Give him all of his vehicles so he can touch the steering wheel on those vehicles and turn the whole car into gold. You know, something like that. Something I think uh, could be a pretty interesting strategy. And he's not going to be the only one. We have a lot of other creatures that have either Inspire triggers or something similar to Inspire. So we get some kind of benefit to tapping them outside of combat. You know what I mean? Now, if you have nothing else to do, yeah, then go ahead and attack with your 2-3 King Makar. That way you can untap during your untap step. And we, of course, have other things that can just untap him before our untap step. That's just going to be the majority of the time how we get his trigger off is during our untap step. Now to go over the boring part of the deck, we do have 37 lands. Arcane Lighthouse is essential for any kind of deck where a big part of what you're doing is targeting creatures to remove. We have Baron Moore to draw a card. We have Buried Ruin to get back one of our many artifacts. A lot of our vehicles are artifacts. We have Cabal Stronghold, just good for mana. Holdout Settlement. By the way, very budget-friendly deck. I think it's going to be pretty powerful for you. It's very strong in removal. Maybe it doesn't have the finishing knockout punch that maybe some more competitive decks do, but I think you're going to hold your own. And we have some interesting lands here like Holdout Settlement and uh, Survivor's Encampment. I think these two lands in particular, nobody in their right mind would want to use in a normal commander game. It forces you to tap a creature in order to add one man of any color to your mana pool. However, it is good with Inspired. So we have a non-vehicle way of tapping our King Makar. We have Inventor's Fair because we're playing a lot of artifacts. We can sacrifice it and tutor up an artifact. Myriad Landscape is an all-star in monocolored decks. And we are playing 29 Swamps. Now we do have some ways of ramping up. Fortunately for us, there are some interesting ways that we can tap our creatures in order to get more mana. With Paradise Mantle, it's an equipment, so we can pay one mana to equip it, and it gives our creature the ability to tap to add one mana of any color. We have Soul Ring, and then we have Springleaf Drum, so we can tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color. We have Leaden Mirror, just a good artifact creature that can tap for black. Honor Worn Shaku, specifically our legendary permanent, which is going to be our King Makar. We can tap him to untap this, so Honor Worn Shaku is kind of like a poor man's soul ring for the deck. And then we do have a Crypt Ghast, because we're playing Mono Black, and it's going to crew a lot of our vehicles pretty easily. Now before we go to the vehicles, we do have some more Inspire creatures. There's not too many of these, but we definitely need them. We have Night Market Lookout. Whenever it becomes tapped, each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. So it's not technically an Inspire trigger, but it's very similar. We have Pain Seer, which is an Inspire trigger. Whenever it becomes untapped, you reveal the top card of your library. You put it into your hand, but you lose a life equal to that card's converted mana cost, so it's kind of like a Dark Confidant, but much worse. However, in this deck, it might as well be a Dark Confidant because we have a ton of ways of tapping our creatures, and two power is enough to crew a lot of vehicles in the deck. We have Servant of Timoret, 
also an inspired trigger when he becomes untapped. Each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way, so it's kind of like an extort. Pretty sweet, can also regenerate. We have Hollow Sage, whenever it becomes untapped, so this pretty much is an inspired trigger, it's just from an older set. You may have target player discard a card. If you can keep tapping and untapping these kinds of creatures, it's going to be death by a thousand cuts for your opponents. Very strong just to force an opponent to discard a card over and over again. And then we have a relatively newer card from last year's commander set that I wanted to play with. I wanted to make it good. This is a deck that can really make it good. Scare Tiller, so whenever it becomes tapped, you can choose one. You can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped or a land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Pretty strong. Only one power though, so it's not for the four mana going to be the best especially with our vehicles. We want a little bit more power, but it's good if we're able to tap it. So going over our vehicles, we have a whopping 21 of them. Cool thing about vehicles is that you can have them become creatures and then they can crew other vehicles. The downside is obviously not having enough normal creatures to crew your vehicles. So be careful of that. That's why we need some other creatures and we do have some more. Heart of Kirin is pretty much just in here to be a flying vigilant 4-4. Crew cost of 3. We can remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker rather than pay its crew cost, but we don't have a planeswalker in the deck. We have Sky Skiff. Very good. Don't underestimate this kind of card. Also, pretty much a budget-friendly deck. As you can see on the left, the price for Card Kingdom is a little over $100. TCG player, 76 to 90 so you can see it's very budget friendly. You can make it even cheaper than this if you had to. We have Smuggler's Copter. This was the one that got banned in standard. A crew cost of one, so pretty much all of our creatures are going to be able to crew it. And when we attack with it, it gives us a loot. Aether Sphere Harvester. This is the one that deals with energy counters. We can pay an energy and have it gain lifelink until end of turn. Another crew cost of one. Very good. Cultivator's Caravan. This is pretty much a mana rock when you don't need it as a vehicle. Pretty nice. We have Daredevil Dragster. At the end of combat, if it attacked or blocked this combat, put a velocity counter on it. Then if it has two or more velocity counters on it, sacrifice it and draw two cards. So it's offering you some card draw there. Not the worst thing in the world if we have to sacrifice a vehicle to draw two cards. We do have over 20 of them. We have Mobile Garrison. This one might be the best just because it interacts with our inspired creatures, our King Makar. When it attacks, we untap another target artifact or creature we control, so we can untap and immediately get our Inspire trigger, which will also help if we have to go up against some blockers. Renegade Freighter attacks, it gets plus and plus one and gains trample until end of turn. Bomat Bazaar Barge, when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. Conqueror's Galleon, this is from Ixalan, so we have a variety of vehicles here. It has a crew cost of 4, but when it attacks, we can exile it at the end of combat, then return it to the battlefield transformed under our control. It transforms into the land Conqueror's Foothold, so we can tap it to add a colorless. We can pay 2 and tap it to draw a card and then discard a card. We can pay 4 to draw a card, and then we can pay 6 to return target card from our graveyard to our hand. So very versatile land once we flip it. Fleet Wheel Cruiser, when it enters the battlefield, it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn, so you don't even have to crew it immediately. Oval Chase Dragster, another hasty vehicle. Cheap crew cost of one, which is fantastic. Thundering Chariot, another fantastic hasty vehicle. Crew cost of one for a strike, trample, and haste. Untethered Express, another crew cost of one. Whenever it attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Also has trample. We have Weatherlight. This one is fantastic because when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to look at the top five cards of your library. You get to reveal a historic card from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So if it's an artifact, it's historic, and that's pretty much going to be it for our historic cards. We have our Adara Express, crew cost of four, but once you crew it, it's an 8-6 with Menace. We have Ballista Charger, crew cost of three. Whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to target creature or player. And then we have Dusk Legion Dreadnought, crew cost of two, but you get a 4-6 with Vigilance. We get Enchanted Carriage, which is awesome because it gives us two 1-1 one, one White Mouse creature tokens that we can immediately use to crew it. And then we have Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, crew cost of three. It deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker in opponent controls when it enters the battlefield or attacks. So this one's pretty cool too. We also have Demolition Stomper. Whopping crew cost of 5, but it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. It's a 10-7. So your opponents are going to have to block it with something substantial. 
We do have some improvised cards in here just to synergize with the artifact theme. If we get a bunch of those gold tokens, they can tap for improvised too, which is nice. Battle at the bridge, which is good removal. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, and you gain X life. Sly Requisitioner, whenever a non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you get a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token, which you can also use to crew your vehicles, making it a little bit easier to get those better ones and uh, turn them into creatures. We have this awesome Herald of Anguish. Flying at the beginning of our end step, each opponent discards a card which is pretty nice. Again, we're removing creatures, we're forcing them to discard. Very solid card, we can also pay two and sack an artifact to have target creature get minus two, minus two until end of turn. We have some graveyard retrieval cards in addition to some of the other artifact cards we have. These are just gonna help us get some of our creatures back, some of our artifacts back. Resourceful return, two mana sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. If you control an artifact, you also get to draw a card. And then we have Fortuitous Find, three mana, you can choose one or both, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, or you can return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Awesome to do both. We do have some artifacts in here that uh, don't really fit other categories, they're just good artifacts. We have Shadow Spear, which... Again, we need a way to make sure our opponents don't have hexproof on their creatures so that we can deal with their creatures with our King Makar. Cranial Plating gives us a way in combat that we can deal some more damage. We should have a bunch of artifacts. Mirror Retriever is going to help us get back some of our artifacts or vehicles from our graveyard. Also, it's a cheap creature that we can crew our vehicles with. We have Swiftfoot Boots just to make it easier to get the Inspire Trigger off. Foundry Inspector because we're playing mostly artifacts and artifact related cards. Inspiring Statuary is fantastic because if we're struggling with mana earlier on, we can just play our Makar by tapping our artifacts. So this should technically be in the improvised category, but I think it's good just to lump it in with all the other artifacts. We have Scrap Trawler. So again, kind of like Mirror Retriever, but even better because it triggers for all of our creatures. And uh, we just return an artifact card from our graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. And we have Metalwork Colossus, which is a fantastic card to have in a deck where a lot of your creatures, you have to crew in order to make them creatures. Until then, they're just not creature artifacts. So Metalwork Colossus, a lot of the time, should be a free cast. And you can sacrifice two artifacts, so you could sacrifice gold tokens to return it from your graveyard to your hand. We have some draw cards in here just to draw even more. We have Sign in Blood. Morbid Curiosity, so in addition to casting this, we sacrifice an artifact or a creature. We draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of the sacrificed permanent. So if we have our Metalwork Colossus out there, we can sacrifice it and draw a bunch of cards. We have Phyrexian Arena, we have Read the Bones, and then we have Dread Presence, so whenever we have a Swamp enter the battlefield, we can draw a card and lose a life, or we can deal two damage to any target and we can gain two life. And then we have some tap untap cards. To do exactly that, tap or untap, one or the other or both. Jandor's Saddlebags, this is the old Arabian Nights card. We can pay three mana and tap it to untap target creatures, so easy way to get our Inspire trigger for King Makar. Puppet Strings is probably one of the better cards in the deck, because it allows us to do either. We can pay two mana and tap it to tap or untap target creature. Icy Manipulator, we can pay one mana and tap it to tap target artifact creature or land. Just ways of tapping our King Makar so we don't have to attack with him and likely get him killed is preferable. And then we have a cool card, Koskin Falls. Yes, it's going to kind of work like the Pillow Fort way that it usually works, where a creature can't attack you unless their controller pays an additional two mana. But it has an upkeep cost where you have to tap a target untapped creature you control, which will be likely our King Makar or another inspired creature. And then we have Sword of the Perunes. Can give plus two toughness, can give plus two power, that's cool and all, but we just want to pay three mana and have the ability to tap or untap them at will. So anyway guys, let me know what you think about this deck. Definitely one I'm more into compared to some of the more played commanders in the format. I think once you go monocolored now, you're not gonna see as many people playing the same decks. Everybody's into playing three color, you know, incredibly versatile, you can deal with just about anything. I, I just like playing something that's a bit more out there, a bit more obscure. And this is definitely a weird strategy where you're just fooling around with vehicles. And it's not even to just make vehicles better. It's to fool around with an Inspire trigger, which is pretty boring. It's just you get a trigger whenever a creature untaps. But uh, King Makars is pretty powerful, so we want to get that removal. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about the deck. Let me know what you think about King Makar. 
You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next time.